Uh, yo, what's up? This is Jack Peterson. Um, I recently finished my first feature film, which is called Sawgrass, and uh, I'm making this video at the request of Film Courage. Um, so this is just going to be five tips for your first micro-budget feature film. All right, so tip number one is basically just put in the work. You know, don't be lazy. It takes a long time to finish these things. Uh, from the from the time I came up with the idea for Sawgrass to the time I finished it, basically was three years. So it uh, takes a significant amount of time and energy and focus to actually finish a full-length film. Um, you know, Sawgrass was like 89 minutes long, and like I said, it took three years from conception to completion. So it's really it's not easy. Even if even if you make something relatively short, like I did, it's still going to take a long time. You know, I, I feel like my second feature film might be a little bit of a smoother process now that I have some experience and I, I know um, what it takes to complete something. But still, I, it's still a really arduous process. So you can't be lazy and you just have to put in the work even if you don't feel like it, even if it's you're having a bad day or something. It's just required if you actually want to finish something. You know, there's there's a lot of people that start a film or they start a novel or an album or whatever the case may be and it never gets done you know pretty much just because they don't have the discipline to see it through so that's pretty much probably the most important thing on this list actually is just to put in the work um, and actually try and finish the feature film instead of starting it and then stopping and starting again a year later because if you're not focused then it's it's never going to get done uh, tip number two is scale back if necessary. So when I initially finished the script for Sawgrass, it was like 93 pages long and it was super ambitious and it had all kinds of live action scenes I was going to shoot and all these extensive like special effects sequences that I had no idea how I was going to accomplish. Um, and I kind of had this uh, naive idea that I'd be able to raise financing for this crazy thing without any prior experience. Um, and to be honest, I didn't really pursue financing that much because I quickly realized it was not going to work. So I decided I would scale back and do something small. Um, so I pretty much did a small micro-budget version of the same script and I scaled back a lot of things and I um, changed a lot of the elements around and made it more... Um, well, I put more documentary elements in there and uh, and I did a lot of animation rather than live action special effects so I simplified it um, and kept the core of what it was but I scaled it back so that I could actually do it on the budget that I had um, and as far as what the actual budget was I didn't it was so small that I didn't even really count it I just spent money as I needed to so it might have been a few thousand dollars um, but regardless it was a lot smaller than what it would have been if I tried to accomplish the original script so just try and scale back if required. Um, if you can get a lot of money your first go around, that's that's cool, but most people won't, so um, just try and do something that you can actually feasibly, you know, finish uh, with, with the budget that you're working with. Tip number three is don't be afraid to reach out. So pretty much what this means is if there's somebody you want to work with or if you have a question for somebody that, uh, that you really are inspired by or something, uh, don't be afraid to reach out to them in some way, whether that's on Twitter or uh, just their email or even a phone call, which is basically what I did. So, you know, when I first finished the script for this thing, uh, I was just trying to get anybody I could to read it that I admired that could give me some actual feedback. Um, and so the first person I called was actually Bob Odenkirk, uh, you know, from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And I just cold called him out of the blue. And uh, at first he was like, who the hell are you, basically, <laughs> and uh, I explained who I was and um, and what I was doing and, and the film I was making. And, uh, you know, he he politely told me that he didn't have time to, to, you know, read scripts, but he talked to me for like 20 minutes, gave me tons of useful career advice and tons of information on how to finish a film and, and what I should do going forward. And, you know, he gave me a lot of motivation that was really valuable in actually finishing the film. And so, you know, does Bob Odenkirk remember me like a year later or whatever it is? You know, probably not. But the fact that I spoke to him and got all that information from him is part of the reason why the film is actually completed now. 
Uh, another guy I cold called at one point was a guy named Ken Levine, who's uh, the creator of Bioshock, and he's a, just a really good writer. Um, and so I talked to him, and he gave me similarly tons of good advice and uh, you know inspiration and just a lot of motivation to you know to actually finish something. Um, he gave me feedback on a short film I made, which was just super valuable, you know, and uh, just uh, really amazing to to get something like that from you know someone that I admire. So yeah, it just you know, never be afraid to reach out to someone. I mean, the worst that they'll do is is uh, tell you that they can't help you. You know what I mean? They're not going to be mean to you. You know, I've never once had someone that I cold called, uh, you know, like, you know, insult me or tell me off because I, I called them or something like uh, Most people just want to help. So just always feel free to reach out to anyone that, that you want to work with or, or that you want advice from or whatever. Um, you know, that's that's how I got Eric Paddock, the brother of the the Vegas shooter to, you know, to help with my movie. And I was able to interview him for the movie and, and, you know, it was great. And it's all because I just reached out to him. Um, so that's a really valuable thing to learn is that there's, there's no one that you can't, uh, you know, cold call or, or email if you really want to. Tip number four is don't worry about festivals and distribution. Uh, I think a lot of people will probably disagree with this, but I've seen a million people uh, make, you know, micro-budget feature films, especially their first ones, and they uh, submit to a ton of festivals and they b basically don't get into any, and then they try to, you know, get a distribution deal, and sometimes they do. Like, I was talking to a girl recently who found some obscure distributor to put her movie on, you know, via VOD basically, and uh, she has made zero money back from that. Probably no one has seen the film, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I, I really doubt that anyone is gonna pay five dollars to see some movie by a no-name filmmaker with, with, you know, no-name actors in it, so I would highly recommend that you try and put your work out for free early on, and then you know, later on down the road, then you can start charging for it or you can, you know, move on to bigger things. But when you're starting out, you know, you almost have to put out free samples. Uh, and then if, if people like it, then maybe they'll, you know, they'll help you fund a bigger project next time. But yeah, don't worry too much about festivals and distribution deals and all that stuff, because at the end of the day, like what really matters at first is just developing yourself as a filmmaker. Tip number five is consider it a long-term investment. And this basically ties back into my point about not worrying about film festivals and distribution. Because, you know, there's some filmmakers that take 10 or 15 years before ever making any money off their films. So that's a common story and it, it could happen to you. Um, so you, you can't give up. You just have to keep making films. And, you know, the truth is most filmmakers never even go on to make one feature film. And, you know, most of the filmmakers that make one feature film never make a second feature film. So it's just about getting past that and continuing to make films despite the lack of, you know, visible progress. Because it's, you know, it's not something that happens overnight. You have to work it up over time. And, you know, my second feature film is a little bit more ambitious. I'm going to try and raise some more money this time. And then my third film after that will probably be even more ambitious. So it's just something that takes a long time to you know, to, to achieve basically. So you have to look at it long term. Um, but yeah, those are my five tips. So hopefully someone finds this video useful and, uh, thanks again to Film Courage.